Hello and welcome back to Everard Junction. It has been a couple of months since the previous video. My apologies for that, but uh, there's a very good reason as to why that has happened. So shortly before Christmas 2023, I moved house. This has been a dream of mine for the last 12 years. I've been saving my pennies. And uh, finally, at the end of 2023, I was able to move house. I've been looking and looking and looking for years, never thought I'd be able to do it. It always just seemed to be so out of my reach, but finally got there. And uh, one of the reasons why it was challenging was obviously I was looking for a house where I could build a model railway and a model railway takes up a lot of space. This is my parents' house. The layout is currently quite safe. Uh, nothing terrible is gonna happen to it in the immediate future. So the new house is a renovation project. Uh, my budget certainly wouldn't allow for something that was uh, fully renovated and fully functional, um, certainly at that sort of size. So let's take a look at the new attic. Obviously it's going to need quite a bit of help before it can support a layout, but uh, it'll give you an idea of the sort of space we've got to play with. I also have a spare room, which I'll be able to use for modeling. I'll be able to get some workbenches set up in there, some proper extraction uh, for painting, and I'll be able to do my work on my rolling stock a lot more professionally and uh, a little bit more efficiently. Uh, also with regards to buildings, uh, structures and things like that, working with uh, plastic card, uh, might be able to get into 3D printing, uh, got somewhere to put the Cricut Maker machine where it can quietly cut things out and not drive me mad sitting on my desk in my room. So all good stuff, looking forward to it, but it is going to obviously take me some time to get to a stage where I can start making regular videos again. So I've just finished putting this ladder in. This will be uh, just a temporary ladder for the time being. But as you can see, we can now get up into the loft space and have a look. I've been up there already, tidied things up and made things look a little bit more presentable, but obviously this is a completely unused area of the house and it hasn't been touched for 72, 73 years. So we'll just have a quick look around. This is just going to be with a torch. The lighting is going to be terrible. My apologies. Obviously, I will be getting some proper lighting up here as soon as possible. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, maybe you can't see, it's not great. But as you can kind of see, uh, we've got a big space here. There's an awful lot of room. Most properties in the UK have uh, two sort of roofing styles. Your newer builds have what's known as a truss roof. Um, so those of you who have perhaps tried to put a model railway in an attic before, um, you'll be familiar with a truss roof in that it's that roof you find that's absolutely full of beams. There's beams going all over the place and it can be difficult to make a model railway work in a space like that. Older properties in the UK, such as this one, believe this was built in 1950, have what's called a cut rafter roof. I believe that's the correct term. And as you can see, the woodwork is generally a bit different. In some cases, it's more substantial and you don't have all these beams running all over the place. So that can be quite useful in respect to building a model railway or a loft conversion. Something that's really nice over my parents' house is that we have a gable wall here and at the other end of the house we also have a gable wall right at the far end there. Uh, so that's really good for model railways. You can see how long the attic is and that's going to be really good uh, for future potential with a layout. The length here, and I'll use feet because the house was built using the imperial system, we have 26 feet between the far wall 
and the wall just here so 26 feet of model railway that should be pretty good if we were to put baseboards at the height of the purlins where they sit currently that's about waist height maybe just under so let's say we put the baseboards at that height that's good for working on the layout that's going to give us 10 feet of width so theoretically very roughly you could have a 26 feet by 10 feet model railway in this room and that is at least twice the size of the current layout. Obviously there's quite a lot of work to do uh, before we certainly get anywhere near building baseboards but anything that's related to making this space useful for a model railway I will bring you along for the ride. Uh, if you're thinking about building a model railway yourself and you've got an empty loft a bit like this maybe that'll help you and uh, it's just you know good for my own personal sort of documentation that's all the channel ever really was for uh, to begin with was just for me to document my hobbies and I consider this to be part of the hobby getting this attic uh, in a suitable suitable condition uh, for using as a model railway room. The big challenge is going to be the floor. The floor is very much uh, not strong enough to hold up a uh, chipboard floor or any other type of flooring. And even if you were to, you know, try and do the dodgy and, you know, put a floor up here and then just say, oh, it's only for storage, but you've actually got a model railway up here and you're up here most days, it's not structurally sound. It's not going to do the job. And you're going to get cracks in the ceiling downstairs. Best case scenario anyway, you could get far worse. So moving past all of the various water tanks, we move over to this section of the house. Uh, as you can see, we have another chimney breast here. This one's a bit of a monster. Uh, I believe this one's got three uh, flues in it. You can see the chimney stack uh, coming out the middle of the roof just there, smack bang in the middle. Um, as we come down, the bricks uh, are sort of I forget the name, I think they called it corbelling or something like that, but basically the bricks are going down like that to then get on the other side of that supporting wall to go into the various rooms. There's a good example of it there. So you've got this supporting brick wall here, but you can see the chimney, the chimney stack doesn't actually have anything underneath it. Uh, there is a concrete lintel running across there, which goes into the gable end of the house so that's providing support for the back of the chimney stack and allowing it to then uh, transition over the supporting wall into the various rooms downstairs uh, this thing is enormous it is not currently active it's all been blocked off quite poorly in the various rooms in the rest of the house um, i've already got a quite attractive fireplace in the living room there's no need for it anywhere else so i would like to get rid of this it's a job you can do yourself with not too much difficulty. I'll probably bite the bullet and pay a chap to take the chimney stack off the roof of the house, although I could hire a scaffold and do it myself. So here we are all the way at the other end of the house, the other gable wall. And uh, there is an additional thing to show you, which is over there, you barely see it. I'll try and show you in better detail a bit later. But basically over there the master bedroom is a dormer uh, so the roof has a section of it um, that sort of uh, protrudes out from the side of the house reasonably attractive thing to do as part of the original design for the building so there is a little bit more space over there although it's very limited you could use it as a fiddle yard at a push but what i'll probably end up using it for is storage Looking down, I think we've got great potential for a very large layout up here, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what we might be able to do. But I'm not gonna rush into anything. You probably know that's not my style. Uh, we're gonna take things slowly, I'm gonna do it properly. And the first thing to do is to work out how to floor this area safely so it can be used for what I have in mind. If there's one thing I've learned with building a model railway, certainly in an attic like this, you want to make this space as nice as possible. You want it to be as bright, as airy, and as relaxing as possible, because that's going to really help your motivation for building the layout. While it would be very easy to chuck a couple of lights up here, clear out some of the rubbish, and immediately start building, it's going to be drafty, it's going to be cold, it's going to be dark, and it's going to be uncomfortable. And that really just does not help when you're trying to build a model railway. And certainly in my case, when you're doing a lot of filming, as you can see, light is everything. 
and most of this video looks pretty dreadful because we do not have sufficient light. I've had a great deal of fun building this particular Lau. I've learned an awful lot during its construction. There's many things I would do differently in the future. So it's a great opportunity for me to start fresh with something new. And uh, also, whilst the uh, the layout has occupied a big part of my life, it was you know something just to keep me occupied and keep me sane while I patiently sat and saved um, in the hope of moving out one day. The new place is a renovation project. It does need a lot of work, a lot of love. My budget wouldn't uh, stretch to something that was nicely furnished and all finished uh, for the size of the property I was looking for. So I landed myself with a bit of a project. I've been busy working on that. I'll have, hopefully, a, a nice little uh, spare room that I can use for just solely doing modeling projects, building, uh, various things to do with the new layout, working on the rolling stock, doing weathering and painting and all that kind of stuff. I'd like to get a much better, more professional setup uh, in that room. Uh, it's a lot of work, uh, which I'm currently sort of working towards. That's one of the priorities for upstairs. And there's the attic itself as well. There's quite a bit of work to do to that uh, before we can start thinking about building baseboards or anything like that. But uh, I have made sure to get myself uh, a property that has uh, a lot of flexibility and a lot of room when it comes to messing around with model railways and it also provides various other uh, useful things for other hobbies I have, uh, particularly to do with cars. So I'm really pleased uh, with the, the last few months. A, a real dream of mine has been finally realised. Uh, the last probably two years or so the layout has uh, uh, been very helpful in just uh, you know, helping cope uh, with the stresses of life and uh, just giving me something to focus on. Uh, but ultimately, I always wanted to, you know, move on in life, and that is what has happened. So many parts of this layout will live on. You've probably noticed over the last sort of two years or so with the videos that a lot of the work has been focused on buildings and structures, and a lot of those buildings and structures are removable from the layout. So this retaining wall, for example, is not uh, fixed in place. It can be removed. The station in the background, we've got the various buildings over there on the station. None of those are glued down. They can be moved. And the terraced houses behind the camera, they can be moved. And it's the same story for lots of other structures. Of course, I always knew at some point in the future I would move out and I wouldn't be progressing with this layout anymore. So many of the things I built I attempted to try and make them movable, transportable, uh, so that bits of this layout can live on in whatever I end up producing in the future. The attic in the new house is considerably larger than this one and it should allow me to create a layout that's approximately twice the size of the current Everard Junction. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. There is going to be a lull in videos, of course, until that uh, day comes when I can start putting some baseboards in and things like that. I'll make a couple of videos perhaps with regards to some of the uh, renovation work that is focused more towards the model railway. Um, so things like uh, getting the loft sorted out um, and perhaps building the uh, the spare room into some sort of uh, study or modeling sort of area where I can work on the rolling stock and do painting and things like that. Maybe I'll make some videos about that, not quite sure yet, but uh, the general plan is to uh, focus on the house and get uh, some of the uh, building blocks in place for getting uh, back into the model railway side of things again.
So in terms of layout stuff, uh, the only real change is I have taken delivery of the new Acura Scale Mark IIb coaches. Uh, these have been in the pipeline for some time now, and I pre-ordered these ages ago when they were first announced. Uh, did a really good deal on the website. If you ordered um, in advance, you got a bit of a discount, and they ended up being really quite affordable. So a bit of a bargain there. Very impressed with the coaches. Obviously, they're bristling with detail, and uh, we'll take a look at a couple of little bits and pieces, and I'll compare them uh, to the coaches from Backman that I currently have, and they certainly compare very favourably and I should be able to run them together, which was my biggest concern with these. I didn't want these coaches to blow the Backman offering so far out of the water that they looked odd when coupled together. I think Acura Scale have struck a nice balance here, and whilst the coaches are a definite upgrade, they look at home with the Backman Mark IIa version of the Mark II coach. So the first thing that strikes me with these new coaches is color. The color versus the Backman coaches is reasonably close. There is a bit of a difference in the shade of grey, and there's a very slight difference in the shade of blue, but overall they're quite similar to each other, so they'll look good in a rake together. Uh, the Backman coach is the A variant, and the Acura Scale coach in front of you is the B variant. Um, they would have been seen coupled in the same rake running together, so I should be able to recreate that same thing uh, with these coaches, which is nice. As you can see on the Acura Scale coach, the interiors are painted. You can see the tables just there uh, stand out especially. Uh, a nice touch, that is something I had to do myself on the Backman coaches. I had to paint all of that and it took me absolutely ages. It was a big job. So it's nice to see uh, some of that uh, stuff has been done on the Acura Scale coaches. They're also lit. The lighting's really effective. It works very well. and. Again, on the Mark II coaches from Backman, you don't get the lighting. That is something I've had to add myself. So with the addition of the painted interiors and the lighting in the Backman coaches, I think they compare quite nicely to the Acura scale version. As you can see, looking underneath the coach along the bogies, the uh, various detail underneath is certainly more pronounced. There's much more of it, certainly a much newer tooling, especially at the end of the coach. There's a lot of detail going on there. But uh, general sort of overview is it looks favorable when compared to the Backman offering. Certainly with a bit of weathering, I'm looking forward to seeing these coaches mixed together and uh, should create quite an authentic train. Obviously, I'll need to add figures into these coaches. That's pretty much a given. But uh, yeah, very impressed with the level of detail, the level of finish. The coaches feel quite robust. I was a little bit worried they might feel a little bit uh, fragile, a bit vulnerable, uh, but they feel quite robust. Uh, certainly I think they'll be okay in the attic. I think they'll stand the test of time. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, those are the new Acura Scale Mark II coaches. I'm quite impressed with them. I've pre-ordered eight of the Mark II B coaches and that should allow me to mix those nicely into the rakes of Mark II A coaches I already have. Some of the Mark II A's I'll decommission, certainly some of the older examples that I have, some of the ones that I repainted perhaps, and uh, some of the newer ones in my fleet will uh, remain in service uh, the, with the view to uh, sort of mix and match the two types of coach together. Acura Scale are also making the Mark II C coach, another variant, and I've got a couple of those on pre-order as well. So that's a real important feature on this uh, time period of British Rail. You had all of these different types of Mark II coaches rattling around the network, and it's nice now to be able to have a, an authentic representation of that in model form. So although I've not used the coaches very much yet, if at all, I am impressed with them. They seem very nice. I'm a little bit pushed for time today, but at a later date, we'll get these running properly on the layout. And uh, I've also got a couple of other pre-orders um, in the pipeline. So as and when those models turn up, it'd be a good excuse to come over to the layout, check them out and do a bit of a running session. I think that would be quite nice, certainly to do um, in the short term while I'm going to be struggling to make progress um, with regards to scenery or anything like that. Uh, at the moment, my focus is on renovation on the house, you know, things like having a floor, having heating, having hot water and plumbing, um, all of that stuff is rather important, and I've been working hard on that. So, quite a different video to what I usually do. Obviously, big changes for the future of the channel and the future of this particular layout. I'm looking forward to getting started on doing something new, and certainly in the uh, sort of short term, just working on some of the rolling stock projects and things like that I should be able to do from the new house. 
So hopefully be able to uh, do some videos this year with regards to model railways. Might include one or two bits and pieces with regards to renovating uh, the house, uh, but only the stuff that really relates to things that are going to benefit the layout uh, that eventually appears in the future. But uh, yeah, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Obviously a bit of a shock, I'm sure, to some of you. I didn't want to say anything, um, although this has been a long time coming. Um, buying a house is a very stressful process. It's very difficult, not easy at all to do in the UK. And there's many moments where it feels like it could all come crashing down and you'd be still stuck at home with your parents. So um, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to tempt fate. I just wanted to let things run their course and uh, hopefully uh, things were going to work out. And indeed, they did. So uh, I'll leave it there. I will be back at some point in the future with a video, hopefully relating to a bit of modeling, uh, but at the very least, uh, it'll be related to a room that some modeling might happen in. All this stuff does, of course, take time and money. I'm on a limited budget, so uh, it will take a little while, but uh, it's certainly not gonna be one of those cases where you know a, a channel just disappears and nobody knows uh, what happened to it. I've moved house, it's going to delay things, Please bear with, and uh, I'll be back as soon as I can. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching the video. Really appreciate uh, the interest and the support from everybody in the channel over the years uh, with regards to the layout and all the stuff I've been building. So thanks very much for that. I was meant to get this video out probably about two months ago, maybe a month and a bit ago, but I never got round to completing the editing on it as I was just uh, spending a lot of time at work doing a lot of overtime. Unfortunately, didn't pan out and the company I work for, or worked for, went into administration a few days ago. There was basically no warning for this, so we're all out of a job, and we're all out of pocket and owed money. Uh, I'm also owed an awful lot of overtime. So very much a bit of a roller coaster for the last couple of months, obviously with the house, and then everything going wrong at work, but it's okay. I've been very lucky. I've managed to secure myself some, some work, future employment, and it's doing a very similar role to what I was already doing. So hopefully things will pan out. Uh, the company is well established and I look forward to working for them uh, for the foreseeable future. So fingers crossed, everything will be all right, but obviously it's all a little bit turbulent at the moment. I've got to pick myself up, dust myself off, um, get all the bills covered and all of that, and then sort of crack on with the house and continue with sort of where I was a couple of weeks ago. So. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate all your support. It's going to take me a while to sort all this out, so please bear with. But Everard Junction will be back, just like the real railway, especially back then. It's just going to be a bit delayed.